Good morning, beautiful people. What up? It's your boy, Mundus. Welcome once again to the Shining Light, a place where we can learn God's word and get guidance and direction for our lives. And I'm back again once again today with another beautiful devotional. You know what I mean? We, we will be delving in deep into the word of God. And I hope you get, get blessed. And today's topic, we'll be talking about beyond the physical appearance. And um, as we get into the, um, into the devotional, you understand what more we're talking about. Um, our theme scripture is taken from the book of John, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 17. And I'm going to read. It goes, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. That's from First John four seventeen. When we say as as he is, that's that's Jesus. So are we in this world. The picture that comes to a lot of the picture that comes to the mind of some is the build, the height, the complexion, the hair, or the physical characteristics of the man Jesus, while he was on earth. It is much more than that. Our semblance is with, is with the resurrected Christ. The glorified Jesus, you know. A few days ago, I think it was yesterday. Um, we would we uh, we we were talking about um, how to mirror, how we mirror Christ, how we like Christ, how we look like we, we look like Him, and we got His Spirit, you know, as He is, so are we. So a lot of people maybe might have um, taken that to mean like you trying to tell us that every every Christian looks like Jesus. I mean, Jesus. You know the way he looks and everything about that, but you have to understand the word of God is is usually spirit, and this was a spirit. You know what I mean? Because the real you, the real you, is not a physical body. You are actually a spirit being that lives in a physical body. Your body is not you. Your body is just a house where your spirit lives. You know, because when we when you, when you die, whatever, and you and you and you and you're buried, the spirit leaves the body. That's the real you. So when, when the scripture says, as he is, so are we, we're talking about the real you looks like Jesus. You know what I'm saying? It's beyond, and in and, and the, and, and the Rhapsody today, the, the, the devotion talks about, this is not about how he looked like, you know, if he had beard. You know, a lot of people debate this. This is like a big, big debate um, for a lot of po folks. They'll be like, oh, did he have long beard? Did he have long hair? You know what I'm saying? They were like, oh, Jesus did not look like that. And they would have such crazy debates about how Jesus looked like, what complexion was he, was he from. That don't matter, you know what I mean? The, but the scriptures we're talking about here is, First John says, as he, he, you know, when we read farther down, actually, let me not, let me not, you know, discuss. let's just continue reading so you can understand it, so I can, I'll be able to explain it much better. I don't want to jump ahead. So, um, it goes on to say, Yes, before his resur his resurrection, he walked Jesus, walked wonders, performed mighty miracles. He commanded the deaf ears to be opened, the blind eyes to receive sight, main limbs to be made whole, and raised the dead back to life. But notice that the John, the apostle, the, the apostle did not say, as he was, so are we in this world. That would have been wonderful, but the spirit, but the spirit carefully used the word is, showing us. We are just as he is in his present state, in his glorified state. Hallelujah. So the Jesus that we're comparing is not the Jesus that um that John talks about here in First John uh, four seven, saying, um, as he is, so are we in this world. As he is, no, as he was. It's not the Jesus that walked the streets of Galilee. You know what I mean? And raised the dead. You know that would that would have been be beautiful. We're talking about the Christ, the risen Christ. You know, there's a total difference. The risen Christ was glorified. You know what I mean? Remember one time, um, I found a scripture. One after he had risen from the dead, they were all sitting together, wondering what's going on, and and G and, and they were saying that the windows and the doors were all locked because they were afraid of the Jews and what was going to happen. And in their midst, in their midst, Jesus appeared. The doors were locked. The windows were shut. How did he get in? This was a glorified Jesus. Prior to that, Jesus had to, um, I mean, he, he he had a physical body. He was he was human, at the same time he was God. But as a because he was he was human, there were some things, um, 
he, he still had a human nature. I mean, I don't, I don't want to say the human nature, but he was human. It was 100% man as 100% God. But when he became glorified, this was like beyond humanity. This was the risen Christ. This was God. <laughs> this was a transformation. So he didn't even need physical things could not hold. They, they, didn't, they didn't make sense. They didn't matter. He could come into a room without having to knock in and get in. His body was not limited. You know what I'm saying? Prior, before he, he was crucified, he, he, Jesus was limited. One time he, he, he got tired and he had to sleep. You know what I'm saying? And he was sleeping on the boat. He got hungry. But this risen Christ is a totally different Christ. You know what I mean? He came in and they saw him and were astonished. They saw him go to heaven. You know what I mean? This was a this was a different Christ. And this is the kind this this risen glorified Jesus is what the apostle is talking about. He says, As he is, so are we. We became joint together. He's the head and we the body. And there's no, the, the, there's no difference between the head and the body. We are one, we got the same nature. So this is talking about the nature of Christ. We we have, we have that glorified nature of Christ. That's what we have. Um, let me go on further. Um, the impressive the impressive thing about his appearance isn't his beard's complexion or height. It is the glory and life emanating from him. So much so that such an instance you don't even remember the fleshly description. You are absorbed into his glory. Read it again. It says, as he is. In other words, as he is the resurrected, ascended, triumphant, glorified Christ. So are we in this world. Such blessedness. This is, this is divine truth. You know what I mean? What an awesome revelation. But is this something that we can, we can take? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes when you read scriptures like this and you're thinking, oh, dear Lord, this is quite big. Is it true? Is it real? You know? But that's why... Um, God told us to meditate on his word because your human mind will try to fight this truth. And, you know, you'll be like, no, that's Jesus. No, how can we be like Jesus? That is just blasphemy. How, can, how dare you say such things? We are like Jesus. You cannot say that. But I did not write the scriptures. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? God wrote the scriptures for us to understand who we are. You know what I mean? And I think that's the most important thing. For a lot of Christians, we need to understand it's an identity thing. We, we know a lot of people, we, a lot of people trying to f trace their lineage or their identity based on on their, on their nativity, where they were born, where they grew up, and they claim, oh, I'm from here, and they'll be proudly represent where they grew up or whatever. And people you know, will kill, kill, they'll kill and fight each other just based on territories or where they grew up. It's like, I'm from here. You know, that's how gangs, you know, gang, gang culture is based on Oh, you're from this block, or you're from this neighborhood. I don't mess with people from this neighborhood. And people will stick their lives on such athlete things. But the real you as a Christian, you know your origin. This is beyond this human life, you know, that describes you. You're from, oh, you're from this country. You're from this state. You're from this place. No, we have an athlete. We, we have our origin in Christ. As he is, we look like him. You know what I'm saying? Our spirits are like him. We have that glory. This is an amazing truth. But it needs, you need to meditate on it. You know what I'm saying? That's what meditation does. It renews your mind and, 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 and changes your thinking to accept and endorse, um, you know, this truth. Because this, this, this is a big truth. And it, 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 will take, um, it will take your mind to be renewed and to be, to, for you to accept it and believe this. Right, I'm going to go on and keep on reading. That's why it'll be a mess to try to figure out Jesus to figure Jesus out in the Jewish body or even or even to, or even be flesh and body conscious be spirit conscious don't appraise yourself by your physical appearance you glorify just as Jesus he's not recognized in the flesh so don't describe yourself by your earthly nativity or human affiliations and you can read further um in Luke chapter 24 in verse 15 it is uh, it describes further about Christ's origin and where, where he came from and who he is. Just go read that chapter, Luke 24 and verse 15, 16 and 31 and 35, those verses. You know, we are like Christ. We got the spirit of Christ. You know, we are, we are sons of God. We, we are like him. You know, he says both he that sanctified and the, the one that sanctified are both one. You know, so we are one with Christ. Um, I'm reading further. It says, see yourself in him as the glory of God. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. That was what Jesus was praying. Remember the final, when Jesus was about to, 
to go on a cross and um, he's about to get crucified. He made, he said this prayer. He says, Father, the glory which gave us me, I have given them, you know, that we might become one, you know, as we are one. That was his prayer. If you go read uh, John chapter 17, verse 22, read that prayer. There's a, pr a prayer Christ Jesus made before he went to the cross. It's amazing. It's a truly, it will truly bless you. And he was saying, just as he was one with the Father, he was praying that we can be, become one with the G Jesus and the Father. We all become one. That means we are the same. We have the same life. We are just like alike. We got the same, except the same glory. It's not a different glory. It's the same glory that Christ have. We have. This can be big for a lot of people. They were like, "Oh, how how dare you say this?" It says, "The glory which Jesus says, the glory which Thou gavest me, I have given them." It is the same glory that Christ have. We have. Can we meditate on this truth? This is divine revelation, divine truth that we need to spend time to meditate on and understand our spirits to, to, to endorse because our minds will fight us because we, we all along we'll be told to feel inferior. Oh, you are a sinner, saved by grace. You are nothing if you are not for Christ, you know. But Christ is beyond you being, you, you're not a sinner. That's, that's not even not a topic. I, mean, I don't even like that word. A Christian is not a sinner. And he was never a sinner. The Christian is a totally brand new creation that never existed before. So when someone says, when you start giving testimony and say, oh, I used to be a sinner. You never, when you, uh, and then I became a Christian. No, you have no past. The minute you become a Christian, that's what it means to be born again. It's like telling a kid that's born new. Oh, uh, remember in your past life you used to do this? No, that's a brand new kid. That's a baby. That's a brand new baby. <laughs> brand new baby. <laughs> that's a newborn baby. Um. He has no past. You know what I'm saying? It's a new baby. So as a Christian, you're born again. You're a new creation with no past. You're not a sinner. You're glorified. You're like Jesus. You know, as he is, so am I. This should be a confession. Say it. He says, as he is, I am. So am I in this world. I am just like Jesus. I'm going to keep on reading. In Romans chapter 8, verse 30, it says, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also glorified. This is talking about us. So we are glorified. First John 3, 2 says, Beloved, now we are the sons of God. And he doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when, we shall, when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. He's saying, we may not look like him outwardly, but does, that don't, it doesn't matter. We are right now the sons of God like Jesus is. Like Jesus is. Inwardly, our spirits, inwardly in our spirits, we look like him. Blessed be God. We look like Jesus. And the real you is the spirit man. It's not your physical body. Stop looking at yourself like, oh, did Jesus have an afro? Did Jesus have um, blonde, uh, blonde hair? Did, 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 was Jesus a brunette? You know what I'm saying? All these, um, do you have that comparisons, physical sense? God is a spirit. You know what I mean? The, your body is not you. The real you is the spirit man that lives in you. We don't know how. That's what he says here in um, um, First John three two. He says, "Beloved, now, now, not now in the future. Now, when the, everything comes to an end. Now, when in, in heaven, he says, now we are the sons of God. Now, not tomorrow. Now we are the sons of God. Now, and he says, it does not yet appear what we shall be." It does not, we don't know how our physical, you know what I mean, what the glorified body will be like. But we know we are sons of God now. But we don't know how this glorified, just like when Jesus was risen from the dead and he, he had this glorified body. He says, we don't know how our physical appearance will be like, but we do know now we are the sons of God. And we know when we see, when, when, and, we, and we know that when, we, when he shall appear, when Christ appears, we shall be like him. It won't be a surprise. We should just look like him. For we shall see him as he is. Just exactly as Christ is, the risen Christ, sitting on the throne. That's how we are like right now. Oh, this is an amazing truth. Can we take this truth and meditate upon it and believe it? What an awesome reality. I want us to say this prayer together. Repeat after me. Dear Father, I thank you for showing me the truth of who I am in Christ. As Jesus is, so am I in this world. 
I'm glorified and conscious the life of God is in me and evidently manifested in and through me. Thank you for making me the effulgence of your glory and the revelation of your righteousness. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen forevermore. Glory be to God forevermore. Um, if you want to understand more about what we read, you know, you can go back to this video, go watch um, the scriptures I've quoted. And also read for the, the further study scriptures. This will help you. Uh, John chapter 3 verse 13, if you can go read there. And First John 3, 2, Hebrews 2, 11. These are amazing scriptures. This will help build your faith. You know, faith comes by hearing the word. You know what I mean? As a word, you hear the word, faith comes. And your, your spirit gets a hold of it. Don't try to reason this out. This is nothing. This is nothing logical. This has nothing to do with logic. It's not logical. This is spiritual. And that's how you got to think about it. So a lot of th times you're trying to logic. You're trying to use logic to weigh things. No. God is not, is, God is not, is not a logic God. He's a spirit being. And we walk by the spirit. Whatever the things that we, we, we move by the things of the spirit. Whatever the word says, is that what we follow? And, and most of the time, the things of God are not logical. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Logic is the, is the lesser knowledge. You know, I will probably, we'll probably do a series on faith sometime. You know what I mean? Um, when we get more time, we'll, we'll study more about faith. But anyway, um, I hope you've been blessed. You know what I mean? If you, if you find this uh, motivating and inspiring for you, I want you to, 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 to write comment below you know what kind of what kind of topics you want me to cover you know what i mean i mean aside from me doing this daily we're going to be doing a daily devotional every day that's for sure but maybe you might have some topics that you want to want me to address or some things we can discuss and learn more in the word of god and go deep in the word of god and learn more and help each other you know what i'm saying put it just leave your the comments below and then i'll try my best to answer and, and try my best see if we can make a video and interact like that you know, it's been a pleasure. It's your boy Mundus. Have a blessed day. Victorious. Meditate on who you are. As he is, so are you. Don't forget that. You know who you are. Have a blessed day. God bless you.